Welcome to the Inner Market Analysis Update. This is being prepared Sunday, October 2nd, and will apply to the market for Monday, October 3rd, where we go through some different markets outside of the stock market. We compare how these other markets are behaving to try to get some insight as to what may happen within the S&P. Now, if you've been watching these videos for a while, there's not a lot of changes. The areas that have been down continue to be down. The areas that are up continue to be up. So not an awful lot of changes. So really, most of this is just an update of the charts. So let's go back and talk about how things apply for Monday, October 3rd. The first thing we look at is S&P valuation. And this is looking backwards, the trailing 12 months. These are earnings reports that have already come out and then they're applied to current stock prices. Now the stock market looks forward. It uses forward looking PE ratios, but we can still gain some insight by looking backwards to see how has the S&P performed historically. If you look at the top chart, the black line is the S&P and how we're dropping down below this dashed red line. That's a PE ratio of 20. We had been quite expensive. Well, as we drop down below that, we're coming more into the reasonable area of being expensive, but we have not come down to the blue area yet, which is considered to be fairly valued for the S&P 500. The chart down below just measures the, dis the distance between the S&P 500, the black line, and the red dashed line, and how we've dropped below and are actually coming down a little bit. This is another historical chart going all the way back to 1980 to see how different valuations affected markets at any given time. When we really shoot up, we tend to become overvalued. When the market really falls, then we tend to get more into a fairly valued area or even into an inexpensive area. The possible positive scenarios, I'm keeping those on hold. I'm just dealing with those in the daily videos right now. We could be setting some new signals with some of the charts that we look at because we've been dropping and dropping rather extreme. So please tune in to the daily videos to get more updates on that. Looking at growth versus value, here's the growth index. And it was down over a percent, at least in Friday's session, but we're still in an overall uptrend. But we haven't broken down through the June low yet. So that potentially could be positive. Looking at just the value where we have been dropping down, we're also in a downtrend with the value index, but we're still building a base down here and haven't really dropped the way the rest of the market has dropped. Here's where we look at a ratio between the two. On the top is growth, and now it has been underperforming value. And even though they're both down, value has been outperforming growth. This is another way to look at this using another index in longer term where it shows that growth is still in a downtrend when compared to value. Here's an inverse of that same chart showing how value has been outperforming on a relative basis. So it doesn't mean value isn't going down, it's just it may be going down less. Here's another ETF which shows pretty much the same thing where growth has been underperforming and value has been in an uptrend compared to growth. Here's another chart too, showing how growth has really been underperforming the rest of the market. And I use a lot of different ETFs and indexes and ratios just to see if we get some insight. They're all pretty much telling us the same thing right now. Some other markets. These are the 30 biggest software companies in the US. I do show a weekly version of this in the weekly video. This is a daily chart showing how we might be coming down and setting some kind of support, but we're still in an uptrend and we could still continue to decline. A monthly chart comparing inflation type stocks with deflation type stocks still shows that inflation is decreasing or deflation is actually increasing on a ratio basis. This is a Baltic dry index. This is what does it cost to ship things from point A to point B? And when this goes up, that has a tendency for inflation to be greater. When this is going down, that means that inflation is lessening or even deflation is coming in. We had been coming down with this, but we continue to bounce back up as prices continue to climb. 
CRB index. This is another gauge of inflation where we had been in a really solid uptrend for 2021 and 2022. We're starting to roll over now and we could be seeing a death cross here. A lot of the weakness that we're seeing right now in commodities is because the dollar has been doing quite well and that really impacts the price of commodities. Corn, after really coming down, has been bouncing up slightly. Aluminum, which really spiked out earlier in the year, has really been dropping. It was up around 320. Now it's down around 114.99. Heating oil, this is as we start to get a little colder, this is going to come more and more into play. Price has been dropping just a little bit lately. Gas, this is what we see all the time, no matter what time of year it is. After really spiking up, it has been coming down. Now, this is part of manipulation going on by politicians because they know we see this all the time. And if prices keep going up, we get mad at our politicians. If this is coming down or seems a little bit more manageable, then people are less likely to do that and vote for the person that wants to get your vote. Natural gas also had been really spiking up, but has been coming down as of late. Oil has dropped below 80, we're at 79.49. Wheat also, after coming down, has been bouncing back up slightly. And this is fertilizer, which still tends to be pretty high. We're not spiking up the same way we were earlier in the year, back in late 2021 and into 2022, but it's still very high. And this can ultimately feed through into the prices that we're paying at the store. Lumber continues to be in an overall downtrend and has been in kind of a significant decline lately. The dollar, which has been really strong, it's seen some weakness. We, we had a lot of problems or situation with the British pound over the last week. And that has really had an impact on the currency markets. And that's also feeding over into the stock market. But the dollar is still in an uptrend, still hanging in there, but has been seeing some recent weakness. Here's the euro, which has really been declining against the US dollar. And here's the Japanese yen. Now, I don't have a British pound chart on here. If you want to see one of those, and I talk about it a little bit more in the weekly and daily videos, but here's the Japanese yen, which has been declining, the euro declining as the dollar has been advancing. Copper, which tends to measure the overall health of the economy. It's just been going up a little bit, down a little bit. It's kind of unsure what to do right now, but it's still in an overall downtrend. Here's the copper to gold ratio, which actually has been trying to show some improvement, but is still in an overall downtrend. Here's a longer term look at that same chart, comparing it to the two year yield, where interest rates just continue to go up and up and up, where copper has pretty much been going sideways overall. And then the ratio has also been going sideways. Gold, they still keep saying it's going to break out. We should buy, buy, buy. And there are a lot of people that buy gold no matter what's going on in the market. They don't really care what the current price is because they know that it'll always have some kind of value. There's other folks who they want to get on the trend. They want to buy when it's in an uptrend and sell when it's in a downtrend. Well, gold continues to be in an overall downtrend right now, as is silver. They tend to treat silver a lot the same way. Some people buy it. They don't even care what the current price is. They just know that they have it. It's tangible. They might be able to use it if things go really crazy in the future. So they just want to buy what they can. Other folks, again, want to go with the trend. Looking at some indexes, the CRB is still tending to outperform the S&P. The CRB has been falling, but the S&P 500 has been falling even more. So the CRB has still been holding up, even though it's showing some weakness. Here's an inversion of that same chart, just showing how the S&P has been underperforming. Here's the NASDAQ 100, which are gross stocks compared to the S&P 500. The NASDAQ 100 continues to underperform. Looking at some other stocks, here's the mega cap. These are the real biggies, the Facebook, the Apple, Amazon, Google, the, the real big companies out there. They tend to still be in a downtrend. They, they don't tend to. They are in a downtrend. But are they going to hold some support at this level? We haven't really broken down, at least as of yet. Doesn't mean they won't, but we haven't done that yet. The S&P 100 
continues to underperform the rest of the S&P 500. Small caps, because they've been, they actually had not too bad of a week. If you just measure the last five trading days for last week, they were up, as were the mid caps. So they've been outperforming lately when you compare it to the S&P 500, but we're still really going sideways with this ratio. We want to see this really go up to help give some support to stocks. Low volatility stocks continue to be almost at a support level here. Are they going to break down below this? These stocks tend to have, have a hold up better when we're having trouble in the markets. And they are going down, but they're going down less than a lot of the growth stocks. Can we get some support from this? Will they start to go back up? We've been just kind of bouncing around here. We're in a downtrend, but after we're, we're trying to have a golden cross up here, but we're just kind of going up and down, up and down right now as there's a lot of uncertainty. The low volatility stocks still continue to outperform the rest of the S&P. Here's the Dow, the trannies, and the utilities all taken together. They are showing overall weakness. And the utilities have been doing quite well, but not this past week. And I'll have a chart to show you. Here's where the Dow is going down and making new 52-week lows. The transports also going down. They tried to bounce up a little bit. We had one good day last week on Wednesday. Well, that didn't last very long. And so the transports have been showing weakness. And utilities, when I did this video a week ago, they were holding up a lot better. They're really declining and going down and testing the June lows again. Here's the different indexes. Here's the S&P showing that we are breaking down below support. We're at support with the mid caps and we're a little bit below support with the small caps currently. The FANG stocks, these are the big tech stocks. They've also been in an overall downtrend but not necessarily breaking down yet. And if we do start to see some kind of a bounce from the market, we'll want to look at stocks like FANG stocks, the NASDAQ 100, the NASDAQ, the small caps, the mid caps, just to see how are they performing? Are they giving some support to the stock market? ARC, which was down and is still in an overall downtrend, it's having a tendency to hold up a little better right now. It's not really declining the way some of the other stocks and indexes are currently bonds are still having a lot of trouble they continue to, to decline based on price which drives interest rates up and here's our world bond index where we're well down below the covid lows currently based on price on a monthly basis stocks are still having a tendency to outperform bonds but we're seeing some recent weakness there and on a shorter term basis bonds when we're looking at shorter term maturities, they're having a tendency to outperform recently the rest of the stock market, but neither are doing all that great right now. The stock to bond correlation is still very, very high, and they both have been going down lately. The Looking at corporate bonds, they continue to fall based on price, which means their interest rates are going up as well. And looking at the S&P 500 to the 10-year yield, that just means as interest rates are going up, the S&P is going down. Junk bonds have also broken below support and could be suggesting that, that they might go lower here. They're, they are in a downtrend, but could they possibly find support as the S&P might be able to find support even though we've broken through this level going back to June? When you compare junk bonds to treasury bonds, junk bonds, even though they're going down, they're still outperforming treasury bonds. And here's the daily chart of how yields have been rising. And if you notice the blue line is on top, that's the two-year yield. That's where you're getting the highest yield right now. And the green line is the five-year, and we don't get to the 10-year until the red line, and that's number three, with the 30-year actually below that. Even So we're seeing a massively inverted yield curve right now, which is not normal. In a good, healthy environment, we would see them all lined up according to their maturity and tending to go in the same direction that way. But we're not seeing that now. Here is an international look showing how U.S. rates are going up. The U.K., which really is having a lot of problems right now, and Germany, which is also having a lot of problems, how their interest rates are going up. Japan is also having a lot of problems, but their interest rates are remaining more flat 
and currently their stock market is holding up a little bit better. That doesn't mean that everything's rosy in Japan. They've got some serious problems. They're just a little bit different than what the rest of the world is dealing with right now. Looking at some sectors, here's this is a, a positive point. We're seeing the ratio between the S&P and the utilities. It's starting to bounce up. And a lot of times, if you look at this chart, when this ratio is going up, that gives some support to the S&P. Just like when it's going down, that tends to help the S&P go lower. We are seeing a little bit of a bounce here because utilities have really seen recent weakness. Staples also have been holding up. They broke through this support level and are starting to go lower. Will they find some support here or are they gonna continue to fall? Energy, which, again, has been getting hit. It, it depends. Sometimes it gets hit really hard. Other times it goes up pretty strong. But when you compare it to the S&P, it's still in an overall uptrend. But that trend isn't as strong as it had been. The tech sector continues to be in a downtrend and declining and has broken through support at the June lows. Semiconductors also breaking through support and below the June lows as well and are in a downtrend. Here's the tech sector by itself. It might be coming back down to this support level, but it broke earlier support that we had in the year. So things are just not looking very good. Some other areas, when you compare growth stocks to bonds, both have really been suffering, but growth has been underperforming recently, even though it's in a kind of tentative uptrend currently. And the 10-year yield to the tech sector, as interest rates go up, this has been really outperforming tech, which has been going down. And here's an inverse of that, showing how the tech sector has really been underperforming the rise in interest rates. Discretionary has it was starting to show some signs of life back here earlier in September. Well, that's pretty much been given back now. And when you compare it to Staples, it continues to be in a downtrend. When you do an inverse of that, it shows how staples, which are not doing all that great by themselves, but they are doing better than the discretionary sector. Energy to tech, when we're in really solid uptrends, you want to be in tech. In 2022, energy has been the place to be, but even it has shown some weakness lately, but still tends to be outperforming tech. And then gold, which a lot of people really think gold should be going up, but it's having a hard time because of the dollar. And I'll show you that on the next chart. It is actually, even though it's going down, it's not going down as much as the S&P. So gold is still outperforming the S&P 500. Here is the gold to the dollar ratio. As the dollar has been going up and gold has been going down, that's why we're seeing a real decrease in this ratio. High leverage loans, we want to keep an eye on this. These are pretty riskier loans that people are willing to take. We have not come down and broken through support as of yet. But if we do break below that, that could signal some additional problems economically. Here's an intermarket analysis chart showing that at least for a day or so, the dollar actually was doing better than oil. But now, even though oil has been declining as of late, it's still doing better than the dollar where we have gold stocks and bonds being down. If you go back to the beginning of the year, looking at some index, this is taking the American Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ and the NYSE and comparing a five day moving average of their highs minus their lows. This is possibly one of the scenarios or setups that we look at. We're seeing real weakness and we've dropped below this red line. And if you look at other times when we drop below this line, sometimes that will give some support to the S&P. So we're starting to get extreme negative with this reading. Small caps holding up a little bit better. They're going sideways where we're seeing the S&P and the Dow start to really break down. Mid caps also holding up a little bit better. And here's the Dow. See where it's falling down a little bit and has broken through support. That's not a very good look right now. The NASDAQ also falling down, broke through this pivot level and is starting to make new 52 week lows, even though we're coming back down and testing this area. Could we get some support from that? That's what I'll be watching on Monday. We might go a little bit below this, but can we close above these levels in the early part of the coming week? Same thing with the NASDAQ 100. We're coming down and testing these lows set back in June. Will these lows hold? Will we see some bounce up out of this? 
because we have a very oversold market right now. We have sentiment really getting extreme. And these are, we're seeing a, a real convergence of some of our setup charts. And when they all come together at the same time, that can give some support to the market. And if we do get a bounce, we don't know. Is it going to be a solid bounce? Are we coming more into a more favorable seasonal period right now? We've made our way through September. October tends to be better for stocks. Will we get some support for that? We have an election coming up pretty soon. Will there be some optimism behind that? The Wilshire's also broken through support and starting to make a new low. All stocks also, both U.S. and international, continue to show weakness. Emerging markets continue to be in a downtrend, but they haven't come back down to this low set during the whole COVID plunge yet, but they are falling significantly. Internationally, everything's down right now. China, emerging markets, Europe, Japan, and the US all are in overall downtrends. Bitcoin is just kind of dancing around the 19,000 level. Sometimes it might get up a little bit above 20. Sometimes it might go down into the 18s, but we pretty much have been floundering sideways currently. And of course, you've got people that have their opinions that we're just setting a base before we go higher. You have other people saying that we're just waiting here until we get ready to break lower. In the meantime, we just tend to trend sideways. Some correlations. We're seeing these are still more normal correlations where the dollar is having a tendency to go up. So stocks are going down. So the S&P and the dollar have a pretty strong inverse correlation, as does the S&P and oil, even though it's coming down a little bit, they both have been going down as of late. The S&P to the 10-year yield also having a pretty strong inverse correlation. Tech to the 10-year inverse correlation. The S&P to the two-year yield, which is just screaming higher and higher, they're also having a tendency to go in opposite directions. So, and if you've been watching these, there's no changes other than the date at the top. These are the areas that continue to be positive, although not as positive. Like energy, it's still positive, but it's been showing weakness. The CRB index, it's still positive, but we might see a death cross here pretty soon. Interest rates continue to go higher and higher. And then here's our whole long list of those things that are negative, which has not changed at all since I first created this list months and months ago. So thank you. I hope you find this a helpful supplemental tool to the daily and weekly video updates. Have a great week and I'll prepare the next video next weekend.